Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to talk about a stock that I own that has absolutely exploded in the last month. It is on fire. It is a hot stock. We've been a hot stock and the shares are going absolutely crazy. I've had a few people saying, what is my plan around this stock? Am I going to hold it? Am I selling it? What am I going to do with this stock being on fire? And today I'm going to let you guys know. And even if you don't own this stock, I think it's a good one to kind of know how I manage a situation like this where you've had a stock and all of a sudden it's come massively on fire and it's exploded what's the kind of the next step so we'll get on to this stock today so this stock is alpha no it's not that even though that one's on fire it's not alpha wave it is hymns it's even though hymns and hairs is on fire it's not hymns and hairs it's dra it's not draft kings even though draft kings has been on fire it is going to be that trace that trace is absolutely on fire at the moment and today we're going to talk about what is the plan for that trace now if you're actually looking in the last five days the stock is actually up 25%. What a move that is. The portfolio, once again, yesterday pushed to all time highs, and it's been a fantastic year. It's been a fantastic, fantastic two years. I really enjoy making these videos because after the, like, the bear market of the last two years, it's so good from that awful market in the back end of 21 into 2022 to now in 2023, 2024, to be able to make these videos and go, there we go, there we go, we're back smashing it again and it's absolutely amazing. So we're going to talk about Dark Trace today because I'm going to say a few things quite surprising I think to a few people about this stock. But yeah, I mean absolutely on fire, up 25% in the last five days. Year to date, up 40%, really good performer. And let's be honest about this stock. I mean, it's a stock that if I actually look at when I first started buying it, which was around April time 2023, this is actually nearly up 100% since that time frame. But I love this stock. It's the financials have been absolutely amazing, and as always, I want to make sure I keep buying my winners, even though my winners keep going up and up and up. And I, I could sit here now and go, "Oh, look, I'm up over a hundred percent." Since I talk about Dark Trace, it's absolutely amazing. For me, it's about making the most money possible. So if I still, if I'm up thirty percent, and I look at that stock and I go, "You know what? I think I could still make money off this buying at these levels. I'm going to buy it, and I'm going to buy it." And that's more important to me than actually going, "Hey, look, I'm up hundred percent. I can brag about that." I'd rather make more and more money. So I keep allocating more capital to my winners. I keep buying my winners. I want to make sure I'm water, watering the flowers and cutting the weeds. I don't want to be watering the weeds and cutting the flowers. I keep buying my winners. And that's something that I've massively tried to focus on in the last 12 months. Is not focusing on, oh, that stock's dropped 20% off a profit warning. Let's put more capital in there. Because financially, it's not performing. You know, Maybe it is an opportunity, but I want to give the same sort of dedication to go, you know what? With them set of results out, my upside has increased massively now with that. It's improved potentially my upside on that stock. So I want to allocate more capital to it. And I keep doing that with Dark Trace because when you look at Dark Trace, it's been full of opportunities. Even since I last bought it on this dip here, when it was a short seller report, there's been opportunities to buy this stock multiple times on dips. And that's what I've tried doing all the time. You know, we had the rally out of the short report and then boom, from uh, when it peaked around May time, there was another 12% drop. June time, another 13% uh, drop there. July time, report once, look at that jump there in share price. Look at the, the earnings being solid there. 30% jump, but then what did it give you the next kind of couple of weeks afterwards? It gave you another 15% drop to buy. Look at September, boom, another great update from the stock. And what did you have after the great update after the stock? Another 18% dip to buy on the stock. There's been so many times on this stock where the financials have just been getting better and better and better. But yet, there's still, there's still been dips and opportunities created to buy more shares, which has been absolutely amazing for averaging up because you've just instantly got those big drops to buy and average up on this position. It's been a beautiful stock to average in on. Even though it's on a really good uptrend, it's giving you the opportunities to buy. And that's why this the stock is up so much and I'm up so much and I've been averaging up so much and I've still got that much gains because there's been those opportunities to buy. And I think it all comes down to this. Like, there's always been these shorts around that trace. So originally there was a short seller report that came out back in 2023, created a really good opportunity in the stock back in 2023 if you did start buying then. I mean, that put it you know below IPO levels even though it was two years on. Absolutely insane. Um, and obviously now it is above the IPO levels, but that's how you know crazy that you know a lot of these shots were taking this stock that it were getting this short attack. And the frustrating thing since the time frame is like they've actually brought an outsider to go through the accounts and you know go and assess these accusations and said, yep, th th there's no truth in the short sellers. And it's crazy that short sellers can have this much power to manipulate a stock price and keep it so low on these false claims and they don't get punished for them. It's absolutely crazy. But that 
a short report has overhanged the stock for the last two years, which has been insane. I mean, it's created an insane opportunity, but it's insane the power of the shorts that can tell these lies about the stock and keep it so low. But I guess it has created that opportunity. And you see this all the time with this stock. I mean, once again, I don't know if it's just because shorts seem to have seemed to collect around this stock for the last two years and they, they had the lockup period end and a few insiders started selling and I can't even remember the amount of times people said, oh, so-and-so selling shares, it's it's bad. They're probably fudging their accounts. I mean, even a few months ago, back in uh, like November time, there was a big, once again, short push because everybody said, oh, the CEO just sold a ton of shares. It's it's gonna be bad results that come out from it. And since that time frame, the stock's up 36%. So once again, you just can't trust some of these short sellers. You can't trust some of these people that make a big deal out of insider selling because you've got a stock like Dartrace where there was big insider selling and, and, and the stock's rallied since that time frame. But overall, what's my plan with Dartrace now? Because obviously it's proven all these short sellers wrong. The stock's on fire. Financially, the last update was absolutely insane. So where am I at with the Dartrace? Well, obviously cybersecurity stock. In my opinion, cybersecurity is a big industry for the next 10 years. A big industry. If you don't have exposure in your portfolio to cybersecurity, it's one of the things that I would say you need to look at because cybersecurity attacks are going to happen more and more and more. And you look in the last two years, you've seen the amount of cybersecurity attacks that go on out there now. Nearly every company is dealing with cybersecurity attacks every single day. It's a massive growth area for the next 10 years. And for these companies, they have to spend the money in it because the, the impact that is on them after having you know, they lose massive customer loyalty and trust if their data is leaked. They potentially lead to big fines themselves. So they might as well spend it on cybersecurity. And when you look at the AI situation, the AI is going to lead to a spike in cybersecurity attacks in the next 10 years, massively. So when I look at the growth that even here is forecast at 10% growth a year, I think it's going to be even more than this because and then a probably prime example is this data is taken from uh, you know 2021 um but since that time frame there's so many things that have changed you know you look at the ai situation this isn't even forecasting this outlook it is i think this is going to be a massive growing area and if you don't have an ai play i i you know i'd be looking at an ai etf 100 if you're not even 100 sure what to buy and obviously if, looking for me i have got data tracing here but I just can't sell it because I feel like in the next 10 years, that trace is set up for a very good 10, 10, you know, next 10 years. And even though at the moment my shares are doing amazing, I think I'm up about 50% on that trace, even though they're doing absolutely amazing. I think that the next 10 years is probably going to lead this to be an even bigger place. I mean, ultimately I've always said, I think that trace gets into a position where it actually gets acquired. I think that's ultimately the end story for that trace. And I hope it doesn't, but I think that's where the end story is, is that a big player comes and takes it out. But you know, when you start looking at Dark Trace at the moment, I see so many people that say like, oh, it, it's a, a complicated business model to own. And I've always said, you know, you buy, I, I did the video the other day and I said, you know, you always buy what you you know when you own or you have influence in. And someone said, well, how, how do you get that with Dark Trace? Well, surely in everyday, most businesses, you'll be aware of cybersecurity situations happening and the growth there. So you will witness yourself the amount of cybersecurity need out there. When you look at someone like a data trace, the reviews are pretty positive on it. The actual platform, and this is why it's really key to look at the financials. This is why so many people don't succeed as investors because they just buy a stock and then hope for the best. They don't actually look at, you are, you are owning that business, guys. If you're owning that business, you have to know the business. You have to know it like you own the business. It's very easy to go on data trace and look at the in investor presentations that they put out and you'll see how sticky this business is coming. You, know, you look at customers with uh, average revenue volumes of over 100K and they just keep increasing more and more and more, as you can see here, apart from obviously the little pullback that happened um, because of the whole inflation period, which was the big slowing point for them. Um, you know, it, there are just more and more people spending more money with them. When you look at the spend of over 100K, it's once again, more and more larger clients coming on they're spending more money with Dark Trace. When you look at the churn, and I've always put these churn figures in the investor presentation, it's always relatively low. Like the customers don't just stay with Dark Trace, they spend more and more because they go, hey, I like this product, so let me go get that product with them. And the product has historic and the churn's historically stayed about where it is, which says to me is that businesses that use Dark Trace don't only use it and stay with them, they stay with it and buy more 
which is always you know the positive sign that you want to see when you invest into a business and this has always been available for people to access and when you look inside the business i mean if the big turning point now is obviously they've always had 90 percent gross margins which is absolutely insane but they've able to control the cost a lot more and ramp up that profitability and now the scary thing is that you've got a company that went from net profit of 508 sorry 581,000 up to 52 million now which is it's so impressive that they're ramping up the profitability and you know dark trace once again having a cracking day today but the big thing that kind of stands out with dark trace is that the, the company realistically trades at 36 times earnings now for, for this company that's putting in these numbers, if we just flick back to the side here, that the profitability has gone up that much. The revenue as well um, has gone from 259 million up to 330 million. That's impressive growth here. The profitability is ramping up. You, this is a premium company, guys. This is a top quality com company growing at 27% year over year with a net income of 8,939%. And it's at 36 times earnings. Like this is a premium company that should be at a premium valuation. And I guess it is a bit of a premium valuation at 36 times earnings, but you look at Palo Alto Networks. This company just reported earnings and they gave a massive guidance that was well below the market expectations, which once, once again, sent Dark Trace down. Once again, we talk about opportunities where Dark Trace has gone down for a, a dip. And I talked about this on the UK Stocks and Buying. It, it gave a big massive, I, I wonder if I could see, yeah, you see here, Palo Alto Networks reported, created a 13% dip in draft, uh, Dark that trace and I was buying up the dip in, in in there once again that was my last buy I'm still actively buying this stock right now rather than selling that's that's where I am with that trace that I, I'm still actively buying even a month ago and I've actually just realized as I was saying that it, that wasn't actually the dip because that was January the last dip I had was actually here where it's only registered as a 5% dip but on the day the stock actually went down 10% and that's actually the last time I bought but I did think I bought in that dip as well so once again, there's been multiple buys that I've actually made into this stock in the last few months. And anyone that has bought in that dip is still up 49% since that time frame. And the reason why is that, and, and that dip was like a back caused by this stock. And, and this stock here, Palo Alto Networks, is another cybersecurity play. And yet the numbers have been, they've been okay. They're growing at 19%. Uh, the profitability is ramping up, but the guidance was a little bit weak compared to Dark Trace's recent guidance. They just hiked it up. And yet this company's trading at 45 times earnings. And Dark Trace is 36 times earnings. Dark Trace is valued less than the business that is grow that it, it's growing massively faster than. And the probability is ramp ramping up a lot faster than. So it's still at a massive discount to the other players in this sort of industry, which is a scary thing. You look at CrowdStrike, that you know, everyone talks about CrowdStrike being like the number one player here. On a forward earnings, by the way, which I think Dark Trace is currently a seven. <laughs> Dark Trace is currently a seven, I believe it is. Um, but even if we say the current thing on a trailing basis and comparing it to a forward basis on, on CrowdStrike, on a trailing basis, that trace is 36. CrowdStrike is 81, over double what it's valued at. And yet CrowdStrike is, it's putting maybe a little bit stronger numbers than that tracing. It's not double the valuation worth though. And, and that's on a forward basis, by the way. On a trailing basis, I think it's like 700 times, which is crazy. So you look at that trace there's still a big disconnect to the valuations of other cyber security stocks and once again i go to the point of view is is this just the effect of the all these shorts being on the stock and now eventually people are kind of realizing like actually we should probably have that trace at like a premium valuation when you look at the numbers they're doing which is is crazy but at the ultimate what that was able to create was opportunities for even the management team to go you know what we're going to throw 75 million into a, into a buyback here and they've bought that uh, really good valuations and when you look at that trace now and, and, and the profitability they're throwing off I know up to a, you know, 100 million in profitability what that's led to is a company that has already a, you know a cracking balance sheet no debt on there they currently sit on let's call it 400 million in cash it's going to be towards 500 million of cash by you know the end of the year and that's nearly 20% of the market cap so that trace can easily now because they're in such a good position and profitability wise and balance sheet wise Next year, you know what? Let's throw another 75 million to the buyback because they're generating that amount of profitability. That's it, it, so incredible. So it's so exciting for where Dark Trace can go. Now, with all that said, you can clearly see that I'm more towards the buying camp than the selling camp at the moment. I think the only way that I would sell Dark Trace is if the stock would maybe go up another 50 to 100%. If you give me another 50 to 100% in the next month, then maybe I would consider maybe selling 10% of the position off. But even then, I wouldn't sell 
the majority of my state because like I said, I still think it's, well, it still wouldn't even be that bad of a valuation and you look at cybersecurity in the next 10 years, I can only see it going very well for that choice. So, I mean, ultimately the big thing is that, you know, what do they, could they do anything to kind of unlock the value here? And I think really, the, maybe the only way that they could potentially even try to unlock the value anymore here is that you look at a lot of these stocks that are, you know, NASDAQ listed compared to the London Stock Exchange, and there's a big disconnect in the value between this stock that's listed on the London Stock Exchange and what's on the on the Nasdaq at the moment. There's there's a big disconnect at the moment, and also I guess it looks like it. You know, once again you look at the, the UK stock market, the London stock market, and you go, it's just a depressing state for stocks to be on there. They're all a discount. A lot of stocks are at discounted valuations right now, and people are just not investing into the UK markets. Um, you've got stocks that are avoiding the UK markets, and you know wh why is that happening? You look at a stock like Dartrace, which we, we say we don't have that many impressive tech stocks on the UK market, and then we get one like Dartrace, and then what happens to it? Well, no one buys it, short sellers attack it, so no wonder, you know, a lot of these UK tech companies avoid the UK markets now, because it's a horrible place to be. You know, we've got a gem here on the UK market at last, a tech company that's a gem in the market, and then look look what happens to the share price. It, it's ridiculous. So. When I look at that trace, I look at what is now going inside the business and I look at the, the geography makeup of the business and I mean nowadays 34% of the revenue comes from the US and if you look at the US valuations compared to that traces, I mean ultimately I look at that trace now and I go, I mean there's a bit of respect finally starting to come in the share price but clearly in my opinion it, I mean, it's still not really that bad of a valuation and I do look at it and I go, is it the time that that trace goes, hey look, we could probably get a better valuation from the US markets. We, most of our revenue comes from the US markets now. Is this the time to move off the London Stock Exchange and go get on the NASDAQ? And I think if if I was uh, Poppy, the CEO of this business, I've got to say, if, if I was her right now, I think, especially with the market recovery happening, if I was going to flick over to another stock exchange, which I would now, if I, if I was the CEO of Dark Trace, I think they would get a better valuation over there. I think you'd be talking, right now, I think this company would be trading more towards at least a Palo Alto Networks level of you know 45 times earnings, which from the current share price, which is right now, is nearly 30% from where it is. And I think that's what maybe if I was the CEO, I'd look to do, because you can just see why so, at Dark Trace, you see why so many stocks just avoid it when you look at what's happened to it over the last few years, but it's finally starting to get the respect now. But anyway, the ultimate video I want to talk about Dark Trace is just saying, look, it's, it's smashing it, it's doing really well, and for me, it's just, I'm just holding, because I still don't think the valuation, I, I, and more than anything, I've been actually really buying only a month ago, so I think it's exciting. It's one of the, it's one of the stocks I own that's really been exciting me uh, in the last few months, and, and, and that's why you've seen basically on every time I've done a UK stocks buying video, I'm, I'm like, I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying. It's been in nearly every video, and every time it's had a dip, you've seen, if you're on the Patreon, uh, you know, you've seen that I've been, you know, posting on the dips, buying, buying, buying. So yeah, if you're holding that trace, you know, well done. And if anything, like I said, I'm, I'm just getting more bullish on it and it's exciting. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm not selling. <laughs> I'm not selling. That's what I'm, I'm going to uh, finish off with. So see you in a bit, guys.